Um, I'm a, I'm really describe myself as a, a home builder. I've um, been in business um, for 25 years in um, Great Vancouver building um, homes. In that period of time, uh, we've built over uh, 12,000 um, uh, homes of all types, ranging from uh, single family to um, to high rise. Um, my background was. Uh, Really, uh, as a housing policy consultant, I was a consultant to um, various provincial governments and um, and uh, for quite a number of years and um, then I um, started to um, get involved with co op housing and and from uh, my interest in co op housing eventually I um, got into the um, into the private sector and so what we've been doing um, at least for the last twenty years is mostly in the uh, private um, market sector. So you've been building homes uh, here in the Vancouver area and what sort of uh, what geographical range are you, do you work in? Well our, our company uh, Polygon is really uh, covers the whole of, um, of Greater Vancouver right right from um, Horseshoe Bay to the um, to the uh, boundary of, um, uh, of uh, Langley and um, and from the mountains right down to the um, the U.S. border. So we, we've, um, I think we've done uh, something like over um, 120 uh, multifamily um, uh, projects over the years, and uh, we have a, a good many under um, underway at the present time. The, 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 the main uh, challenge that has uh, faced Vancouver for many years has to do with the um, the, the high uh, cost of housing in. in um, Greater Vancouver, and um, that's really um, probably more due to the uh, the high cost of um, residential land than anything else. Uh, the, the land costs an awful lot more here than um, than Prince George. It uh, it costs more than uh, Saskatoon or uh, many other uh, Canadian uh, cities, and and that's again because there's a, a limited supply of land that can be used. Um, uh, on which to build housing. Um, we, we're situated here between the um, the mountains and um, a, a large um, agricultural um, land reserve that's um, quite rightly uh, sacrosanct, and, and and so we have to um, uh, work within these limitations uh, and to um, uh, find um, housing uh, sites that are uh, close uh, to. Um, uh, schools and uh, parks and uh, the various ur urban amenities that uh, the uh, planners will um, will uh, recommend to their political masters that can be um, can be um, uh, transformed into um, into housing communities and and, and so uh, that's always been a challenge and uh, I think we'll continue to um, to uh, challenge uh, uh, policymakers and um, and people uh, going out to look for something um, affordable for for many years to come. The 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 when when Vancouver was the city of Vancouver I'm talking about now when the city of Vancouver was was laid out the the uh, the in the early part of the um, the 20th century the the single family home was was king and uh, that's what. Um, the uh, civic fathers uh, thought that um, uh, good uh, burghers would um, aspire to, and and, um, and there was very little thought at that time given to um, uh, apartment zones. The apartment was uh, something quite a different form of uh, housing. Uh, normally, people lived in single-family homes, or if they uh, didn't didn't have the money to do that, they they were lodgers in someone else's single-family home. And so, but uh, the fact that uh, uh, and town row houses uh, were typical of um, of uh, Montreal or um, Toronto didn't really evolve in Vancouver. So, as a consequence, uh, when you compare um, the, the great cities of Canada, uh, Vancouver um, was was planned uh, at a lower density. Than say uh, Toronto or um, or Montreal, these very large and, and very wonderful 
single family um, zones, which um, over the years have really been sacrosanct. And it, to, you know, it's very, very difficult to go and assemble uh, a bunch of single family houses and, 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 um, and, uh, and do something in, in say, a, a townhouse form. And uh, it's very challenging, and, and most of us don't really um, uh, aren't really prepared for the time uh, and aggravation of uh, challenging city hall and, and local ratepayers groups to do that. So who, yeah, I mean, who do you face when uh, when you want to do that? Uh, there's city hall, local ratepayers groups, uh, citizens acting on their own. I, I find that the uh, the plan is at city hall. Um, by and large, are, 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 are not um, uh, opposed to um, new initiatives for densification. It's it's much more at the um, at the ratepayer level. Uh, people feel that having a uh, seem to feel that having a townhouse across the street from them is going to devalue somehow the their property, and because. Um, uh, single-family homes are, have become people's um, most important investment. They, they, they're going to. They, they, they're very keen on safeguarding the, the value of their their housing. And um, I don't think it's actually um, uh, proven that, that having a townhouse, if it's a, a nice and attractive one across the street, does, does actually uh, devalue your home. But nevertheless, that's. Um, what an awful lot of people seem to believe, or they believe that it's going to bring somehow some undesirable people into the area or something else. There's so many people on both the east and, and the west side of the city who um, get to a certain age when their uh, children have uh, flown, the, flown the nest and, and um, they're looking for something uh, in a... Um, where there's a master bedroom on the ground floor, a, a form of bungalow or a, a form of smaller ta- town home, and they just can't find it. They don't necessarily want to live in a um, high-rise apartment, but they would like something of a lower density, but and smaller and easier to take care of than what they uh, have. So, um, as a consequence, they um, they tend to come out and um, uh, and buy um, homes from us in. Um, in uh, White Rock or in Langley or somewhere else where uh, actually they might be uh, prefer to be living in the city of Vancouver. Well, I, I do want to say that I think uh, Vancouver has actually done a marvelous job, uh, particularly um, in the downtown area and in and around uh, Force Creek in, in redeveloping um, uh, former industrial um, land for for housing and and it's uh, created a, um, a, t- a tremendous um, a city life in, in in the downtown area and and uh, we're the envy of an awful lot of um, other North American cities in in that respect. However, at the same time, I, I do feel there are um, other industrial areas that um, could be developed uh, for housing and and. Um, uh, and perhaps um, some of the other um, communities in, in Greater Vancouver have um, gone more in that direction. For instance, uh, uh, there's, there was recently uh, over 200 acres in, um, a, along the um, U Rapid Transit line in um, Burnaby, uh, rezoned from industrial to uh, high density residential. Burnaby's done a magnificent job of. Um, uh, of kind of redeveloping their their um, industrial land to to take uh, more population as part of the regional growth plan. Burnaby has four town centers and 13 what they call urban villages, and they, they I, and there's a tremendous um, vitality to um, what's been going on in in Burnaby. It's uh, for a while it was the metro town area, and now it's the uh, the Brentwood area is uh, undergoing. Um, a lot of densification, and at the same time, the um, the city of Burnaby is putting in uh, a lot of parks and libraries and uh, municipal uh, facilities and commercial to make the whole thing a a very vibrant um, area. And and I think um, there's parts of the, the Greater Vancouver where where that could be accomplished too. I'm thinking particularly of the um, industrial land along the um, 
on the, the south uh, edge of the city along the Fraser River. Some of that's already been um, de- developed for residential, but there's lo- lots more capacity. I hear I hear the um, the the, the, the uh, argument that um, well we we shouldn't. Um, lose industrial land in the, in the city because um, you were going to be losing um, blue collar jobs and, and, and that sort of thing but um, believe me things have changed remarkably there's not that many blue collar jobs <laughs> anymore what the type of people used to do blue collar jobs working in offices and, and restaurants and um, other kinds of service um, industries as well as um, high biotech and 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 um, the, the old uh, factory there isn't too much need for factory and, and, and warehouse land like there used to be and what industrial land we do have in Greater Vancouver uh, an awful lot of that it's not very intensively used it, 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 there could be much more um, uh, if the value was higher there would be more intensity there so I, I think that there's a the whole area um, to the um, East of uh, Force Creek is another area where, uh, which has been rezoned to accommodate uh, high tech. I, I think there's a tremendous opportunity there to um, to uh, have an integrated community of, of uh, live work of people in the um, in the new um, high tech uh, professions, but along with housing, along with um, service and, and residential, and, and most importantly, also uh, including. Uh, uh, some uh, new cultural um, facilities such as yeah, art galleries and that sort of thing. Well, I, I think there's ways of integrating um, different types of uh, housing in family areas. And I'm, I'm thinking right now of a um, development that uh, we still have under construction called uh, Churchill Gardens. It's all in South Vancouver. And th- there we have, uh, surrounded by single family homes, we have uh, townhomes, we have large townhomes, we have small townhomes, and we have apartments. And, and uh, that, the, that will be well integrated into the community. It's like a, a kind of a pocket um, uh, development. It's, it's not large, but it has a very much a, a, a residential feel. It's not plunking uh, some huge high-rises um, next door to... Um, to a single family which would cast shadows and all that sort of thing and there seems to be a good acceptance uh, by the neighbors um, so far and the importance of that development is a lot of the uh, people uh, who are buying there that they, they, they have uh, children and their children will be going to the local school uh, and and so that will be keep the uh, the vitality of the um, of the, the educational system up and, and where in so many single-family areas, the oldest single-family areas, the, um, they're occupied only by older people, not enough young people coming into the community. So uh, there's there's an example, and there's lots of um, examples where uh, smaller developments have come in along the street. Unfortunately, um, not, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, the, the bylaws really don't permit at the present time enough uh, sensitive uh, integration. We were only able to uh, build Churchill Gardens because it was a former private hospital site. If we had uh, single-family homes there, they would have been, it would have been too expensive for us to assemble, and I'm sure that uh, it, it wouldn't have uh, received Yeah, I, I think it must be very, uh, very challenging to um, find um, affordable housing um, if you're a young family in, in Greater Vancouver. Um, for, for many years, um, I, I believe that. Um, I guess uh, I, I was. I grew up with having a backyard, and I believe that um, uh, kids uh, uh, really benefit from uh, from a backyard and. That all uh, housing for um, for for um, children it really should have some kind of ground orientation, uh, be be some townhouse form or single family or something of that. But what I've noticed lately is more and more families are starting to uh, to live in apartments, 
It's partly because uh, many of the um, newcomers to the city from Asia are, are probably used to apartment living, and and uh, and the children maybe um, uh, are used to it themselves. And, but um, I, I I do believe that uh, I suppose it may sound old-fashioned, but it's kind of a, a Canadianism that. Um, Kids should have um, backyards or be able to go out directly uh, to a playground. So um, I wouldn't mind seeing in in, in some of the um, uh, industrial areas as they get redeveloped for housing that a real emphasis on um, on ground orientation in order to uh, provide opportunities for um, for families uh, with children. At the same time, I think that those of us in the um, uh, home building industry um, have to um, be more sensitive to the uh, needs of um, families um, who who want to live in apartments. Uh, our company, for instance, has started to build uh, bigger apartments, particularly three bedroom apartments. We find uh, there's a good demand for those. Uh, we, we we will have to um, maybe put in more um, instead of just the De Rigger Health Club. We've got to put in uh, amenities in, in the development that respond to the needs and interests of, of children, such as uh, tot lots and um, and uh, playground, mini playgrounds, and, um, and and those uh, sorts of things. I don't know, maybe even uh, games rooms and and that. And, and and so we need we need to kind of plan the the uh, the, the high density buildings more to accommodate uh, families than we we would have done a few years ago. Well, those, that, those families are always changing, though. I mean, they might move in with some, uh, you know, elementary school children, and then five years later, you've got high school children. Um, do, do those families do they come and go out of these uh, sites, or, or do you try and build it so it can accommodate really all different ages and stages? Well, uh, we also have to think of the three generational. The Asian family is often three generational, and so we have we have to think about them too. But um, one, one thing I have learned that um, people no longer seem to have the idea that they're going to buy a home and, and live there throughout the whole life cycle uh, seem, seems to, to me that that notion uh, of our, our parents or perhaps our grandparents has, has changed and that um, as people go through their life cycle, they, they, um, they link up and, and have a family or they... The family splits up in some way, and uh, uh, that uh, their accommodations need changes, and, and so they will go through a number of homes during their their life. Well, as a um, someone who who lived in uh, so-called illegal suites uh, for many years when I was a, a student in Vancouver, and when I when I first went into the um, the labor force, um, I'm a big advocate of. Um, of um, secondary suites. In, in fact, um, I was a member of a, um, a provincial commission um, uh, a number of years ago which advocated that um, there should be no such thing as a, a single family zone. In fact, uh, in all, every, every lot you should be able to build a, a two family house. A two, uh, uh, and, I, and I think that's fair. And I think the other thing is that all uh, illegal suites um, should only have to meet very minimal um, uh, health uh, requ and fire requirements, and, and should be uh, should be legalized, and, and uh, the owners not penalized in, in any way. Because that's we need all types of housing to to accommodate the the tremendous number of people who want to live in our city. I, I, I think uh, ha having secondary suites and, and, and making them legal is a, is a great way of um, gradually uh, densifying um, uh, a city. And um, I also um, think they're, they're great um, uh, so-called mortgage helpers for young families trying to buy a property of their own. And uh, also they, they supply um, much-needed housing for um, the student population and uh, and uh, many of us. So um, I, I, I just am a, a tremendous um, advocate of um, 
of um, secondary suites. So someone uh, said to me, and I, I live out in, by Horseshoe Bay in West Vancouver, and someone said, how would you like to feel if um, uh, your next-door neighbor developed a secondary suite? And I, I really would be, um, would be delighted. Um, I, I think it uh, just makes sense for, for, for all of us to um, have the uh, advantages that, um, that secondary suites um, afford. I think Vancouver has a pretty good um, transit system on the whole. Um, Churchill Gardens is located on uh, right on Oak Street, so uh, there's bus service at, at the door, and um, and I, I guess there will be some linkage to the um, the new RAV line going to the airport. So, um, um, but um, I, I, I think that um, certainly um, having um, uh, dense nodes of development in, in various places does facilitate um, um, uh, rapid transit, which um, which is uh, something we're, we're going to need. It's going to be interesting, uh, and I'm assuming that the the RAV line is going ahead to to Richmond. But uh, how the uh, city planners are going to take advantage of um, of that line in in, in uh, creating um, nodes of density um, along um, Canby Street, if that's indeed the, um, the the way it's it's getting out to um, to Richmond, and uh, the, the, there'll be both challenges and opportunities in that respect. Can you touch on that for a second? What would you like to see in, uh, at some of these nodes along uh, Canby Street? I mean, what uh, what do you think the city should be looking for? Uh, well, I I th I, th I think there are tr just tremendous opportunities. Uh, say the whole. Um, um, Oak Ridge area is, is one area that um, a lot of parking lots there and, and uh, there's a lot of uh, potential for uh, developing um, a, a kind of a uh, urban village at, at that uh, location and then I'm sure there are others. Uh, I don't think the, uh, the Victorian architecture is the, the problem. Um, I, I have a personal preference for living in um, in as close proximity to nature as, as I can. That, that's just my preference. I also um, really enjoy uh, landscape uh, of all, all types. I, I enjoy the indigenous landscape that this wonderful coastal area has, but I also enjoy the, um, the, the street trees and, and the more planned and formal spaces that have been created in Greater Vancouver. I, I think you'll find um, in multifamily development, there are many opportunities for, for landscape. In, in term, I, I'm not sure about uh, the green roof concept, but I can tell you that there's, there's nothing uh, is absolutely possible and even desirable uh, to create um, uh, green terraces at various levels so that people can have direct access to, to landscape and sunshine and and the elements and, and, and everything else. So I, 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 I'm very interested in, in that. Um, but um, I, I, I do have to uh, say, though, that um, you know, compared to an awful lot of other cities in North America, um, the, the, the city planners here have done a marvelous job of, um, of uh, landscape in connection with uh, the urban form. Um, I go to, um, to to Calgary. I go to Dallas. <laughs> I go to a lot of places, and they're they're, they're, they're totally barren compared to uh, what we have in this um, this great province. Can you think of a specific example of that? Uh, you you're talking about sight lines from uh, from Falls Creek to the mountains, or um, what? Uh, uh, I'm thinking space? about some of them. The the say the. Uh, the large multifamily, uh, the, I should say, high-rise developments uh, uh, situated along Georgia Street. How, what wonderful edges many of them have in terms of um, of landscaping with, with uh, water features and and all that um, sort of thing. And and that that's really marvelous. You know, there's a whole uh, greening of uh, of Georgia Street was set out as a, a target. Um, uh, 15, 20 years ago, and, it, and as someone who drives along Georgia every, every morning, I, I, I just uh, enjoy it and see how the seasons um, 
are, are um, interacting with the, the landscape and, uh, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful to have a city, uh, city street like that in our town and, and there's lots of more opportunity to do that. Well, I, I think the, uh, our, our industry, the home building industry in Vancouver is becoming a, a great deal more interested in uh, sustainability of all types. And uh, certainly our company, we're, we're looking at um, uh, and studying how, how to make our buildings more sustainable. As an example of what we're doing, we now are inserting a, a special section on uh, sustainable features in our um, in our marketing brochures for the first time, and and, um, uh, and as we go forward, I, I'm sure that we'll be incorporating more um, sustainable uh, uh, features in 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 the buildings. We're already um, uh, pioneered a lot of the work on the stormwater management to to cut the um, runoffs, and uh, we already uh, have uh, introduced new materials and, and and that sort of thing. But uh, we, we certainly um, uh, see that as a uh, as a whole area of um, of interest, and and we will be participating um, in in that because um, uh, I think consumers now. Uh, are interested in um, in uh, lessening the impact um, uh, on the environment, and, and that's uh, we as a builder certainly um, have that as an objective ourselves. Right, you met um, in, in terms of some of your projects. Are you working towards the uh, LEED certification, LEED standards? Yes, uh, so, so some of our um, our uh, senior staff here are already LEEDs have taken the courses already lead certified themselves in fact um, uh, we we uh, we're also studying um, doing um, certain buildings to um, to uh, meet those um, standards I, I i think that uh, there's still a lot of opportunity to redevelop um, industrial land for for housing and uh, the the there's the marvelous um, urban destination that is being created around uh, Force Creek that that needs to be completed the the whole of southeast Force Creek is still sitting there um, but there are other areas in the uh, in the city where the industrial land uh, needs to be studied can it be used more efficiently than it is uh, being used today and um, can, can some of it be um, developed for um, residential and residential that uh, will um, meet the needs of, of the community if it's uh, and, uh, and in that regard I, I would particularly like to see family oriented housing um, uh, as a priority for um, uh, the, the city we, we have a tr tr tremendous lot of uh, high-rise apartments which meets the needs of uh, single people young people elderly but what about the needs of um, people with, with, with children? And I'd like to see a focus on that in, in, in as we go forward to redevelop the industrial areas, as other um, communities in the municipalities in Greater Vancouver have done and are, are doing.